So that's the Casio EF539 Edifice. There's module 5118. So if you were coming from a bright place to a dark place, that'd be enough to look. Like if the power just went out or something. If you really need to see underwater, you're going to need a, a backup of like an electrical light source or something. Or tritium. So I can still see it with my eyes, but it's uh, not exactly... There it is. It's not exactly... I don't know. You can still sort of see it. So that's, that's, is that not enough to, uh, is that not enough for most people's purposes? So, I refer to these two as the truck driver's combo, the cab driver's combo. So on the right hand side is a Guess Steel. Uh, it's called the Spectrum. It's a W14043L1. Uh, and on the left we have a Casio Edifice EF539 with the module 5118. So on the nine o'clock, on the three o'clock subdial is a 24-hour indicator, meaning it'll show you basically the what what the equivalent 24-hour time would be in AM or PM. Yeah? So as you can see, it goes 04, 08, 12. It, it's you can see it's marked. You can can you see that? It's rated to five atmospheres. On the back, it say 50 meters, 165 feet. Uh, that is gold-plated stainless steel. This is just stainless steel. There's no luminescence or backlight or anything on this watch, but I'm going to tell you, it doesn't really need it. So, and this one has some wear and tear on it. But, uh, maybe we'll get into that. I, I like that in a watch. Okay, that's, that's odd. That's showing me shiny spots that are not worn out. So most people wear their watch on the outside. I wear them like this a lot, so you may notice the wear and tear on the top more so with me. Okay, so, oh, there we go, that's a nice neat uh, angle there. If I press this, it starts the chronometer. Okay, if I press this again, it would pause it. And if, see, paused, stop, I should say. That's the start stop on the top pusher. The bottom pusher resets it. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, I'm not, oops, I'm not pressing it hard enough. Now, you will see why I called these the truck driver special. Did I react or get worried about that? This is a big, heavy motherfucker. This one's 43, about 44 millimeters in diameter. Uh, and this one's 47.5, or 48 millimeters in diameter. Now, this one has a different style of chronometer. This one's... 60 minutes, 60 seconds, and 60 minutes. 60 seconds at the 6 o'clock position subdial. 60 minutes on the 9 o'clock position subdial. Now, this one here, as you can see, the 6 o'clock position subdial is actually the seconds indicator for the main clock. And then, uh, should have turned the video image stabilizer on. And now this one, if I start it, and this one is a 12-hour chronometer, 60-minute chronometer dial. This one's just a second. So how do you count seconds on the chronometer? I'm about to show you. So when you start the stopwatch, and that's what happens. That second hand starts moving. Stop it, and it stops. Okay, so... As you can see here, the date wheel, the date window is at the 4 o'clock position. Now, take a look. 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and what's at the 3? Oh, okay, I see what you did there. I, I see what you did there. 
So this watch, I will tell you, has a lot of asymmetry built into it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a quick uh, clip, a snip, right here. Okay, edit mark. Okay, so I'll, I'll be back in a few minutes, but for you, it'll be a few seconds. And this is with the video stabilizer on. It's interesting. This is a Sanyo CG65, and uh, the camera I'm using, I should say, and it has video stabilizer and it has image stabilizer. And for comparison, there's a matches pack, and there's the uh, there's the uh, leather thing that your uh, owner's manual comes in with a Dodge Ram. That's set to universal time. No, you may have noticed. Uh, one of these is set. Should be four hours ahead of the other, or four hours minus the other. So this one is set to UTC. It is October the 1st. Now, I said this watch here, this uh, edifice, is asymmetrical. Uh, like it's designed so that it looks symmetrical at first and you realize it's not perfectly symmetrical. And I give you an example. If you were to remove all the removable links, you would have this weird odd. You would have five links here and six here. Can you, I'm not sure how well. So let's get a shot of the back. Can we do that? Oh, let's uh, let's do it this way. Oh dear! Oh dear! Now I don't know what that DY letter code means. So what did this one say? Uh, cased in China, the Japan movement, uh, DY, I don't know what the stainless steel, water resistant, 10 bars. So this is 100 meters on the front, says 10 bars on the case back. This one says five atmospheres on the front and uh, 50 meters or 165 feet on the back. So you may see how sparkly these are. There's a combination of, for example, here the one, three, and five in this order, and they are brushed, and then the two and four, just counting left to right or whatever, are polished. This here appears to be the same, brushed, brushed, and then polished. Okay, you're gonna say hollow end links, or what's the lug with 22 millimeters on this one? This one here, I think that's 18 millimeters. This one's 22. Um, I can measure again, but then I'm not sure if this center lug piece here. So you'll see there's no drilled lugs. I think. Oh no, this one has. Sorry. See, I got it backwards. This one has those holes. They call them drilled lugs. And you'll notice the form factor is very similar to a Casio you've heard of called the G-Shock. Now notice this is not designed to absorb shock so much, but it is willing to sacrifice certain parts, namely this first link and this first link here. Looks like you could take them right off if it got if it got crushed this way. So it's uh, so it doesn't sit perfectly flat as it is. There's marks on this one. So as a collector, as a watch person, as a as the watch commander of the local chapter of neighborhood watch. 
so I'll tell you, uh, so I like, I like the small dings and stuff. Now there's one right here at the 10 o'clock marker. I wonder if you'll be able to see it. Yeah, there it is at the 10 o'clock marker, which is also, it says 50, the 50 minute marker. Uh, now what happened was I was wearing both watches, uh, at the same time. What you're not supposed to do. I, I call that the Vanding Kirkhoff because I wear like a whole bunch of them and I try to make them uh, line up so they don't bang into each other. Uh, not that I would care if it was just stainless, but I want to protect the crowns and I don't want this gold to get any scratched up more than it has to. Because once it's gone, it's gone, you know. But uh, I'm not a big gold person, so bear in mind when I if I go off about this watch and how good it looks, the guess on the right hand side, it's not just because it's gold. But what I like is how reflective it gathers all the light. Now this one's very domed, it's very convex. So I'm going to show you quickly what happened the other day. Okay, I both my watches were like this, and this one impacted this one. This one, because it was on my right wrist, like this, and then this one was on my left wrist. So they were both dialed down because I was wearing two of them, they were both dialed down, and uh, the bands are way too big, and this is why I chipped the glass, but did not break it. So, it was very interesting, it's two different styles of making a watch tough, and yet, uh, they come out very differently, this one's very curved, and then if you look at the bezel, the bezel is beveled, there's the Timex in the globe. The, the bezel is beveled. Now look at that. Now, you may see some distortion there, but I'm telling you, it's, it's, look at the angle you gotta go at, and then, uh, if I, just to show you that chip again, at this angle, okay, even if I wear it, uh, underhand, so to speak, dial down. Now see there, it's, it's quite obvious to someone who was like looking for things like that, okay, but, this is the type of watch. These are, would have both been about 300 bucks, Canadian, brand new. They've been making these, I think, since 2011. I'm not sure, 2010 or something. I could be wrong on that. They still make them now. You can still get them, but the model number is longer. But it, it appears to be the exact same watch. This one, they make one very similar. Same bracelet, same case. Roman numerals on all the even numbered hour markers, and then batons, pretty much like these, on all the odd numbered ones. And I'm not sure if the chronometer dials are actually date indicators that work, or if it's just a fake chronometer. But the new, so this one was listed at, uh, so, 109 pounds and change, sorry, 109 pounds and change, this one was 110 pounds. Alternatively, this one was listed at uh, $200 US, $199.99. And this one, I believe, was from 2011 to 2014. I can find comments and reviews about it. Uh, so a watch that isn't available anymore, or a watch from a company that's not like a watch company. So Guess is a fashion house, but they've actually been making watches, or selling watches, since uh, 80... oh dear, 82 or 84, 81 or something like that, 1981. So just to show you again that I'm not messing around with this chronometer. If I pause it there, oh, it didn't pause. Pause it. Now bear in mind, I was using my left hand and I would normally have that on my left wrist using my right hand. Okay, now interestingly, you can reset it from here. See how quickly it snaps back? Okay, and this date window, uh, I should have got a shot last night, but I didn't, because last night was September 30th, and it turned over to September 31st, and I was like, that's not right. Um, so, of course, the first position, if you get really good at this, once you know the watch, you can pull it to the first position easily. Otherwise, just pull it smoothly to the full extension, that's the second position on this watch, and then push it in a little, it should click with positive engagement. And then you can, oh, in this case, you, uh, I guess it would be counterclockwise. You're basically pulling, you're, you're, you're pushing it with your thumb towards you, so to speak. 
Um, around the eleven, at about eleven o'clock. So when I was when I was adjusting the time uh, last night, at around eleven o'clock. Uh, or no, it wasn't last. It was it was two nights ago. Today is Friday. Uh, I think it was Tuesday night. I caused this chip after I took possession of the watch. Before I technically paid for it. Before I put a battery in it. Okay. No, I don't put them in myself. I get a jeweler to do it. I could do the work, but I figure why well, put my foot through a Rembrandt? I believe is the phraseology. So these edifice watches are available in models with Bluetooth at 636 Canadian dollars uh, with the slightly different colors now I don't know all the different colors are available in or anything but I found this exact stock like I found a stock photo of this exact watch when I looked up when I looked up this watch see all my books Those are all set to universal except for this one. So what I was thinking, this one here, if I look at the wear and tear, if I look at the wear and tear, it appears to me, and the style of watch, it is the type of watch, it's the new one, by the way, I forget if I mentioned, it's the, so if this one was listed at $200 on the American site I found, the new version that looks the same from a distance and the dial is cosmetically different is $330. 65% more. So you see that the 24 hour indicator correlates to uh, even even though it's coming up. So on 1955 or 7:55 p.m. Now it's 7:56. Just went off. And uh, you can see that 20 it'll, that that 24 hour indicator at the number at the three o'clock uh, sub dial position, three o'clock position sub dial. That'll line up perfectly with the 20 in a moment. It always does it. The second, the, the minute changes over when it's faded away. And this one and this one are within about a second of each other at, at worst. See, see that glint? There's a 100 watt light bulb over here. If I pass my hand over, it's only a 100 watt light bulb. So this one, as I said, doesn't really need luminescence. These white strips are not luminescent material. This is mother of pearl. Okay, now, it, I, don't know how to describe this stuff, but uh, it's very, very. It works. It's very reflective. This is this is a watch that shouldn't have luminous on it. When I see a Rolex or a Tudor, or whatever, all these different types of dive watches uh, with luminescence on them, I just think that's ridiculous. Because either you need a light source to charge it and still see it a few minutes later if you're underwater or whatever you should have perhaps indiglo or perhaps tritium tritium in the marathons i think this is just my opinion i don't own any of those watches i haven't seen them maybe they got a purpose uh, a, a thing with them you don't like so now this one on the left if the power goes out you walk into a room that's dark whatever it'll glow for a few minutes i think the the loom shot i took was just over a minute and was still visible even when the camera started to not be able to pick it up so well uh, you're going to hear this from other watch videos too it's actually still visible even the, what it is is uh, our watches are on one level and then like for example some people are watch people they're not videographers okay I'm a little bit of both now I'm not a big fan of the tachymeter but what I do like is they got that uh, swapped second hand thing so this second hand is the one you start and stop you don't have to wait for it to be at the top of the of the clock face and then start it Okay, now you may notice I like stainless steel. Okay, so I call it the truck driver special, the taxi driver special, because in my mind, you could set these up. So, for example, this one here, I got the feeling somebody purchased for somebody, and they wore it every day because there's just that right type of wear and tear on the band yeah you can see it at that angle see it it's not as beat up as it's coming across in this photo but this is or this video this is a really good capture of the wear and tear though there we go see it's not horrible but that is where the bottom would be when most people wear the watch this way I usually wear them this way okay dial down they call it 
and we're getting some good angles here so I call it that because I think this one was bought by some somebody chose this for somebody and it must have meant something because they wore it every day now I don't know if you can see the scratches because even I don't quite see them now there are scratches on the lens see how, see how bright that was that's just that's almost as bright in real life you can see the reflection of my window there with my Mi'kmaq flag okay now the 24 hour indicator where is it hold on let's put these uh... Let's see if these line up just right that, that looks like it's slightly misaligned it looks like it I don't think it is we'll find out in about 10 seconds you think is that misaligned I never noticed that so just maybe it's because I'm capturing right now I'm recording right now so anyway, I would I would set this one to the time zone my family lived in. And every time I looked at this one would be like, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay. Now for this one, it would be the local time zone, either where I live or where I'm driving. Okay, remember, this one has a 60-minute chronometer. So, this one has the 12 hour, so it's 11.59.59 59, if you want to get technical. And this one here on the left side, you may be looking at it funny. That big arrow goes, it goes clockwise, 0 to 6, and then that small arrow that appears blue. I, I don't know how to explain this, that's one hand, so I guess I, it's like a compass needle, it's not two separate hands. When that top one's pointed at the 6, this, this shorter one, Sorry, when this long, longer end is pointed at that six on the outer ring, the shorter hand, which also appears to be blue, will be pointed at that six there, and it'll go, it'll continue seven, eight, well, marker eight, marker ten, marker twelve, and the other hand, the other end will be around this part here where it's not pointed at nothing. And it seems, I'm going to try this again, but I'm pretty, it seems that it runs past the 12 hours, just keeps going. So if you don't know, the hours of work regulations state, basically to the effect, you can't work more than 12 hours in one day. Well, I think it's 13, whatever, 12, 13. And you must take a one hour break at some point. So when you're on your break, you're thinking of your family, this one. Now, if you wanted to swap them back and forth, or have one on the left, one on the right, or whatever. But if you if you have your logbook and you jot down, you got you can jot down local and universal time, and the reading on whatever chronometer you're using at that moment. You can pause it, and I showed you before, we can reset this. While this one's running, we can reset it, it goes back to zero, stops. This one you have to pause first. I should say stop start stop start stop reset start reset is a possibility with this one with this one it's start stop reset oh that's going to go around for a while now let's see how long it goes around for That is the one oddball thing about that, but if you just let it run down the 60 minutes, when the hands get back to the top, it just stops. This one appears to keep running. I'm going to check that again. I'm not 100% sure here. <clears throat> and it will take 12 hours to be 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure I left it running and then woke up and it was on the 2 hours. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Now, it's possible I reset it 
and and then start it again so uh, just to be sure and as you saw from the loom shot the the looms the luminescent material on the hands is just about proportionally right now it's the, this this and this are not the same watch okay this is mother of pearl and it looks appropriate this is luminescent it looks appropriate here I think this is resin I'm not 100% sure I'm not sure what the batons are but they're painted in this brilliant blue very reflective but because of what the watch is made of and the style of it, it looks correct and and I figured this is the type of watch that you might buy on your own you look at it and go yeah I need a watch that one will work and then you just buy it two three hundred bucks yeah whatever the gas station maybe but I don't mean that in a bad way you know like a truck stop type of thing you, you see where I'm going with this right and then so on this one again as I say if you put it on another time zone of where your family is you've got the 24 hour indicator here so 12 hours from now when this hour hand goes all the way back around to the 8 it will not be on the 20 on this indicator this sub dial it will be on the 8 And that one just stops so I can see how these could help you really help you keep uh, a logbook straight and the other thing is if either one of them runs slower the battery dies as long as you don't as long as they don't both die at the same time change the batteries in uh, you know, alternating years or something so there's no backlight function or anything in either of these to waste your battery power only the chronometers and hey if you use them every day you're not wasting shit that's a part of what you bought them for right so I've owned this one for, uh, let's see, over a month. About five, let's say it's five weeks, maybe a couple days more. And this one for about a week. And of course, here's my product of USA matches with the maple leaf on them. I swear to God. Just for size comparison. And this one is big, so I, I fall into an interesting position of having uh, my wrists are about six inches if we're strict. Now with this one, I want to flop it back and forth, front to back, dial up, dial down. So I've got about a link on each side, about two links I could take out if I wanted to fit it flat to my wrist on either side. But as I'm flopping it, as I'm flip flopping it, flipping it, you get this. Uh, you, 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 my wrist is sort of like straight here right and there'll be a gap on either side that's not a big problem with this one but this is about as big as it can go and still do that with this one I'm gonna size it right down to the six inches I'm gonna size it right to my wrist which is these three expandable or removable links popping off I believe that's these three if I pop that in. yeah one two three that one will stay on that little piece will stay on and it would be just right because this one is so damn big that uh, it's not it's not gonna flop unless I put an expandable band and I can't because it's too heavy it's too damn I could but it's too damn heavy and it would be uh, oh by the way you also get the uh, edifice logo on the crown Maybe that goes that way So what did I say? This one was listed at 109 pounds and change, 133 pounds and change, 132, 133 pounds. And then this one was like a, a pence more on the British side I found it on. Uh, that's how that goes. Or $200. And then you would pay shipping. And then in Canada, you'd have to pay the exchange rate uh, instead of shipping. And you would have to pay sales tax uh, if you bought it in Canada like in person somewhere so these uh, sub dials have a metal type of ring around them bear in mind I haven't looked up everything about this watch yet to find out everything about it but if I angle it just right maybe you'll see what I'm talking about that it has uh, metal rings around the sub dials and there's some similarities 
there are some similarities between these two watches. Okay, very clear baton markings where there aren't numerals. Here's another thing about the working man. Uh, 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock. So, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. midnight, midnight to 8 a.m. That would be a, a three-shift thing at a factory, wouldn't it? There's a triangle there, isn't there? And just some mathematics and, you know, s symmetry perfection I'm looking for, OCD. I'll attempt to attain it, and I never will. So if I hold this at the right angle, we might get those uh, rings. Now neither of these presents any particular problem viewing them in the sunlight with uh, there we go, sort of, there we go. Can we get that out of bank? So those rings appear to be metallic. I'm not 100% sure what they are. Oh, you can see that crack nice and clear now. And there was no visible damage to this one. It, it would have banged going like this. Okay, It would have gone like this. This part here. I heard it bang too. I heard the crack. So the one problem with building a watch, like a brick shithouse, so to speak, just a big, thick, heavy, heavy metal case and all that, all the force that it encounters, that impacts it, will be transmitted directly to whatever's inside. In this case, the lens. Okay. So it's a different way of doing it. A big, huge G-Shock has a different way of doing it. You know, maybe a guy driving a truck or a taxi doesn't want to look like a kid with a big satellite uh, dish on his wrist, you know. This, this is this is clean enough for for a working man. If you wish, you don't want to wear. So if you show up wearing, I'm going to use the Rolex stereotype, but whatever brand. And you show up wearing a Rolex, a Patek, you know, and you're you're making a delivery or you're trying to get a meal at a truck stop, you're going to, you know, just raise too much attention to get anything done, right? You know what I'm saying? Got to keep it low key. And then even this one, it is a gold watch, but it's not covered in diamonds. It's not simply the square ones are the one. The square watches are the ones that really. Maybe I'm wrong here, but they really seem to be the ones that are like sold on, looking like they're expensive. This here, I think, you know, you can get away with it wearing this one. I get away with wearing this one. And if anybody looks too close, it says guess. It's a fashion thing, you know. If if they're close-minded enough to do then maybe they'll just ignore me <laughs> so it's got these rings here I believe there's five concentric yeah five concentric rings at uh, I don't know etched or molded into the stainless steel or whatever uh, the sub dials have rings etched in. they're uh, recessed in I don't know if they etched them or how they did it stamped it whatever okay, and then that's all gold plated except I suppose for the black printing I don't know how they did that for sure you can see the hash marks and the thicker hash marks on the five minute marks uh, and I looked no I thought oh maybe it's like a Rolex no I, I don't know where the numbers are so <clears throat> I think I'm about done with this mini review I haven't worn them enough to uh, they, they do sort of go together they're both very sparkly and shiny because the underlying metal is the polished and or brush stainless steel uh, and they use the term gold tone. I, I'm not sure what that means. Oh, it's gold colored, but it's it is gold plated. It's gold plated polished stainless steel. It's also brushed stainless steel. And here's here's this edge of the case. Even even the back is shiny. So W1404, 3L1, uh, and the man that put the battery in said he thought it was citizen response, it was citizen, uh, and he said something about time, maybe Timex or something. So whatever it is, it's some sort of quality movement. I don't know what's in the new ones, okay? I don't. I just know I wouldn't buy it because it costs more and it doesn't look like as good of a watch. Maybe I'm wrong because I haven't seen it in person to see if those subdials are real, if they're just date indicators. No offense, the date indicator I do not find is useful on this particular watch as this chronometer but I mean multi-purpose you could swap those out for something else couldn't you as, as a as a watch house as a watchmaking house 
So as a fashion house, they specify the watch and then, uh, you know, the specifications they want and somebody has to build it, right? So this entire, this entire uh, piece here is gold plated, even where the hash marks you see around the, the beveled part on the inside, I don't know if you call it the inside of the bezel or the inner bezel. I think it would be called the inner bezel. Let's get these up close so you can hear them. So I don't think that's making enough noise for the camera to pick up. So let's try this one. two weeks. 